Hey everyone, so welcome to another video and we have a fun problem today. It's a slightly easier problem so you can get out and enjoy your Friday, but today we're going to work with singly linked lists. So the goal of this problem is to find the nth to last element in the linked list. So as you can see in our example here, the first to last element in this list is four, the second to last is three, third to last is two, and fourth to last is one. So we're gonna just write a function to do this. And first of all, there aren't really that many things that we need to clarify for this question. It's pretty straightforward, but it is helpful for us to know if there's a particular way that they want us to represent this linked list. So in this example, let's we're just gonna do a basic Java linked list with a single node with a node with a single next element in the node and the value of the node. So we're going to just do a integer linked list and let's just define a private node class here. And we're just going to put two variables in it. We're going to put private in value and we're going to put a private node next and that's going to be our entire node class or our linked list class and in most cases your interviewer is probably going to suggest something similar or they may even give you this ahead of time so you want to be prepared to use whatever format they recommend but for this case this is going to be simple enough and so now let's think about how we're actually going to go about solving this problem. So if we knew the length of the linked list, this would be super easy, right? Because all we would do would be to say, you know, length of the list minus n, and then you would go that many steps through the linked list and you would end up on the nth to last element. Like in this example here, we have a length of five, so it would be, five and then minus n which is let's say n is one five minus one is four you go four steps you go one two three and four and then that's our answer and that would be really simple and we could do that in this example even if we don't have the even if they don't tell us what the length of the list is because we could just do two passes on our list and we could count the first time we could do one pass we would just do a while loop and we'd say while node is not null go to the next node and you would count each step and you would go forwards until you get to the end until you get to a node that is null and then you would know the length of the list and then you would go back again and you would do this method here that we were just talking about but that's not necessarily the best way to go. And the reason for that is that we're gonna to have to run through the linked list twice. And granted, the runtime is gonna be the same in big O notation whether we run through the list once or twice. Because in either case, it's gonna be either, we're either gonna, in the one case, it's gonna be two, t the runtime is gonna be big O of two times n, right? And then if we run through the list once, it's going to be big O of n. And big O of 2n simplifies to big O of n. So it doesn't really make a difference except for overhead. But since we can do this in only one pass through the list, we want to do that to show our interviewer that we're not being wasteful and that we're thinking about this. So we can think about an alternative method where rather than go through the list and count and then go through again, we're actually going to have two pointers. So let's imagine I'm going to just copy this list here down below and I'm going to show you what this is going to look like. So let's say we have a current no, we're, we're going to keep two pointers. We're going to keep a current and we're going to keep a like we're going to call it follower because it's going to follow the current. And so at the beginning, our current is at one and our follower is at one. And that's fairly straightforward. And now we're going to say, so whatever our n is, so whatever the number behind the follower or the, behind the current we want, we're gonna move the current node, that number of nodes forward 
and then we're going to start moving the follower and current in sync with each other. And then when the current node gets to the end, the follower is going to be where we want it to be. So for example, let's say in this case that n is equal to 2. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move current to here, right? And that's going to be our first step. And then we're going to, in our next step, move current to here. And now we've moved ahead two steps. So now we want the follower to move in sync with current. So in our next turn, we're going to move that to four, but we're also going to move follower to two. And then in our next step, we're going to move current to five, and we're going to move follower to three. And now we know that since the next, so I'll just represent this here like this, we know that the next node after the current one is null. And so the current one is on our last node. And that means that follower is now, because we designed it this way, follower is exactly n behind the current one. So this is basically what our algorithm is going to look like. And it's fairly straightforward. It's not a super complicated algorithm. But we're going to go ahead and code it up. And let's see what happens. So we have our node class here. And so we're just going to write a function that's going to return a node. And I'm just going to call it nth to last. And it's going to take in a node, which is our list. And it's going to take in an integer, which is the n value. And so we need two nodes. We need a node cur, which is going to just be equal to node, and node follower, which is also equal to node. And now we want to first, in our algorithm, we want to advance the current, the number of steps that we need to advance it. So we're just going to go and do a for loop for that, which will be really simple. We're just going to do for in i equals 0 i is less than n and i plus plus and now we actually notice that we have a slight problem and we need to check with our interviewer because we don't know the answer which is that what do we do if n is greater than the length of the linked list so what if in this first for loop we run past the end of the linked list and then there's not a valid answer right so we might ask our interviewer, you know, there are a couple of options and we want to be prepared to discuss what those different options are. So in one case, we could just return null. So we could do, in this case, if cur is equal to, so if cur is equal to null, then we want to, then that's going to be a problem. So we could say return null. We could also throw an exception. So we could do like, you know, throw exception. Or maybe we could do something else. Maybe we could just return a node that where we set some additional flag in the node or something else. Like there are a lot of different things we could do, but in this case, well, we you can ask your interviewer and just you can most cases your interview will let you pick something and you just want to be prepared to justify your choice so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just return null in this case because i think that's the simplest answer and it's going to lead to it's just going to be much more clean than most of the other options and then assuming that it's not null we're going to say that cur is equal to cur.next so we're going to advance our pointer by one, right? And now we've advanced our pointer, our current pointer, and now we want to start moving our two pointers in synchrony with each other. So for that, we just want to keep going until we reach the end of the linked list. So we're going to use a while loop. So we can say while cur is, and so in this case, actually, we want to make sure that we don't go past the end. In the previous, in the for loop, we, wait, we said if cur equals null, so we don't want to do in this case though while cur equals while cur does not equal to no, equal while cur does not equal null. And the reason for that is that when cur this is going to break out of the loop when we're in this configuration here. 
where cur is equal to null and follower is now one past the item that we are supposed to be at. So we want to make sure that we say here, we want to check while cur.next is not equal to null. And that's going to ensure that we end with cur being the last element. So with cur being five like this and follower being two behind it, then ending with the current node being null. So little things, and if, we, if you miss this, that's fine. And you would certainly find it later when you go and run through your code and check it. But it's a good thing to just be aware of now, and we'll just do it now. So we're going to check that cur is not equal to null, cur.next is not equal to null, and then we just need to advance both pointers. So cur is gonna be equal to cur.next, and the same thing with follower, follower is equal to follower.next. And now all we have to do is return follower. And that's it, right? So that was pretty straightforward. And now let's go and as we always do, we need to test our code. So we can start with this example that we had right here where we're gonna say that, I'm gonna delete this here just to get it out of our way so we have a little more room. And I guess I can delete this too because we have our list. But let's go ahead and say that, let's say that n equals two. So we're gonna call nth to last on node one and n equals two. So current is gonna be equal to one, which is right. And now follower is also equal to the first node. So this is what our code is going to look like and we're gonna go through our for loop now. So for in i equals zero to i is less than n. So if cur equals null, which it does not in this case, so we're gonna skip down to the next step and now cur equals next, or equals cur dot next. So we're gonna to move to the second space, the second node. And now we're gonna come back and now i equals one. So i equals one and one is still less than two. So we're going to go here and cur is not equal to null. And so we're going to skip to the next step and we're going to do cur equals cur dot next. So we're going to implement this one more. And this is what we expected so far. And now i equals two. So we're going to come here and we're going to say i is not less than n. So we're going to break out of our for loop. And so far so good. And now we're going to come here to the while loop. And so cur dot next is equal to four. So cur dot next is not null. So cur is going to equal cur dot next, like so. And follower is going to equal follower dot next. So now we're incrementing follower and we're going to end up here. And we're going to loop again. And cur dot next is not null. So we're going to increment cur and we're going to increment follower. And now on our next turn, we see that cur.next is equal to null. So the next node from five is null. So we're going to break out and we're gonna return this node three, which is the node that we expect. And let's just go through one more test, which is gonna be pretty quick, but it'll be helpful for us to make sure that we've covered our bases. And I'm gonna set node, I'm gonna set n to be equal to 10. So this is the case that we were accounting for in our error handling, and we just wanna make sure that our error handling works the way it's supposed to. So we're going to come back and we can go ahead and reset this. And we're gonna set the, we're gonna set the cur and the follower to both be one, and we're gonna come down to our for loop, and we're going to iterate through this, and so i equals zero, and we're going cur dot net cur is not equal to null, so we're going to increment it. Now i equals one, and cur dot next is still not null, so we're going to increment it. Now i equals two, cur dot next is still null, is still not null. Now we're going to increment it again, and we keep incrementing it until we get to here. Well, until we get to here, and now cur is equal to null. So and n is equal to five, I believe. So we're going to return null in this case. And that's what we expect. And our client code can handle that. So 
that's it basically. We now have code and it finds the nth last element and we've tested it and that's it. Have a nice day.